Hey guys, my name is Millie and welcome slash welcome back to my channel. So do I look the exact same as like maybe one of my most recent videos? Um, one of the Camp America ones? Yeah. Am I filming this video and that video 20 minutes apart? Yeah. Am I changing my clothes and my outfit and my makeup? No. I'm working so hard. I'm literally getting up every morning at like half eight in the morning. I'm filming and I'm editing all day until 10 p.m. just to make sure that all my videos like you have a summer full of videos whilst I'm away. Recently on one of my camp videos I had a girl comment that she's going over to camp to America for the first time to work and she's going to be a drama counsellor which if you did not know is my speciality. It's what I was last year. Um, big up drama counsellors, you are the best. She said to me can you give me some ideas on what to do with the kids at camp when it comes to drama and I was like absolutely girl I've got your back. So I've compiled a list of all of my games uh, here which I played last year um, with my kids and I'm just gonna explain them to you uh, if you just want the list directly I'm pretty sure you can probably look up most of these games by name and they'll have instructions somewhere on the internet again just look up online like drama kit uh, drama games to play with kids things like that so many resources really really brilliant I'm just gonna walk you through some of these games tell you if the kids really liked them, kind of what they were about, how you play them, how I maybe like twisted them so they worked better for camp and yeah. I am going to be looking down when I'm reading these, apologies, but the first one is Splat. When I tell you my kids were obsessed with this game, any age ranging, any age ranging, any age was perfect for this game. They all understood how to play it. They loved it. I would get kids from across like the green at camp going splat at me. They loved it and they associated it with me. They would always come to a drama lesson and be like, hey, can we play splat today? And I'd say, if you do this exercise really well, maybe I'll consider playing splat. And it's such a, a good game as well because they can actually play it themselves. So if you need to sort something out, just set them aside to do that. Um, and they'll know what they're doing. Mafia, again, an amazing game, but I would play this maybe with the older kids. It takes more kind of like concentration. And also the Americans taught me, so I introduced this to them and then they said, oh yeah, we've played this game before. And I think they had a different name for it. Um, and they did like a storytelling version. So in my game that I got taught in the UK, you just like close your eyes, the mafia kills somebody and then everybody goes around and guesses who it is. But in the Americans game, they wanted like a story from the teacher, which is me. Um, so I'd have to make up a story of how this person died. And then they had like a guardian angel that would, if the guardian angel picked the same person as the mafia had, they wouldn't know who each other picked, but if the guardian angel happened to pick the same person as the mafia, you'd have to then say a story about how they almost died and how the guardian angel saved them, give them a prop. So sometimes I would split them into groups and then um, I wouldn't actually physically give them a prop. I'd just say, hey, your prop is a treasure chest um and so you can have them then perform to the class like a little skit they've made up give them time to themselves in their groups to come up with an idea and then they perform it to the class or another twist on this is you can have them perform it to the class and the rest of the class doesn't know what the prop is and the rest of the class has to guess security guard the lads were obsessed with this one because they would do such stupid things so they um security guard is basically where you have somebody stood there um who is the security guard and everybody else makes a line behind them and the security guard it's like a what's it called a it's an improv game so the security guard will go oh you can't come through here with fireworks the boys would do something stupid they'd be like you can't come here through here with like a llama full of drugs and i'd have to be like guys like let's let's make it friendly okay let's not make it inappropriate so just watch them on that one but they found it funny so this was good for the younger kids um, and i use this as kind of a warm-up one but have them walk around like animals or have them walk around leading with certain parts of their body or have them walk around doing a different emotion it just shows them especially with the younger kids who maybe aren't too sure about looking stupid in front of their peers that it's okay to like be silly at camp and it's okay to be silly in drama and drama's all about that and drama really i think at camp needs to be more them having fun and doing games and building their confidence rather than them acting well got boom chicka boom a classic um sell me a product so i would say sell me my bum bag and i'd give them my bum bag and they'd have to stand in front of the class and come up with like a commercial um park bench wink murder um zip zap zip is it zip zap zop 
I can't remember exactly what that's called, but there'll be a variation of it online. We had act out a scene but change the emotions, what I've written down here. So I'd have them act out a scene and then change the emotion uh, whilst they were acting out the scene. So I'd say to them, you're in a plane crash, oh no. But you have to act angry and everyone in the scene whilst acting out the plane crash would have to be angry and then i change it and i'd go now you're happy um what are you doing now this is one of the new ones i didn't try last year but i'm gonna try this year called what are you doing so i've written down them everyone stands in a circle and somebody stands in the middle of the circle doing an action um for example they are brushing their teeth so they're stood in the middle of a circle miming brushing their teeth and then somebody asked them what are you doing and whilst they continue miming whatever they're doing, you know, brushing their teeth, whatever, they have to say a different action. So they're stood there brushing their teeth and they go, oh, I'm playing basketball. Um, not sure how this is gonna go down. I'm not really sure how you can expand more on the game. I've got shopping list, which improves the memory. So you have to go around saying, on my shopping list today is oranges. And then you go to the next person, they have to say, on my shopping list today is oranges and, and then add a new thing. And it keeps going around until somebody forgets one of the things um heads up heads down so that's when everybody stands in a circle and you all look down and then you go heads up and if you make eye contact with somebody you two are both out i've got handshake murder so this didn't work amazingly and i think it was how i explained it to the kids i think if i did a better job of explaining it would be better but essentially you have so everybody closes their eyes and you as the teacher go around and you tap somebody on the head and that person's the murderer and then you go to a dinner party. I think it might be called dinner party in some places actually, but you go around and you shake somebody's hand. You shake, you can just go around, everybody's shaking each other's hands. And then the murderer scratches. So you'll be like shaking somebody's hand like this. I'm just shaking my own hand. And the murderer will like scratch your hand like this. That means that you've been murdered and you have to go around and shake a couple more people's hands. So it's not obvious. And then you drop dead. Um, and then everybody pauses and you have to guess who the murderer is after somebody's dropped dead. This didn't really work because the classes were smaller. Um, so by the time somebody had dropped down dead, you'd have like three people dead already. And then you had like five people to choose from, from who the murderer was. So it's it works better in bigger groups or in maybe like a more spread out area. So they're not shaking each other's hands as quickly. And then my last game is Grandma's Footsteps. So you might have played this as a kid in primary school. Um, but I made it into like a drama game by having the same concepts. So you have somebody who's standing away from the group with their back turned and people have to move when their back is turned. But when they look, they have to look out for any movement. And if somebody's done a movement, you send them back to the start line. And I had my kids move in different ways to get to grandma. So I'd say everybody's going to be crawling and then they'd all try and crawl to grandma. So hopefully if you're a drama specialist this summer, that's giving you some ideas on what to do. They also work when you're not in drama, if you have to entertain your bunk for a bit, if you've got like a period of waiting time where you're waiting for like 20 minutes and you just need something to do with them to keep them entertained, try them. They might work, they might not. Let me know if you have any more games down below because I, I want to try some new games this summer. I'm going back as head of the performing arts in my camp. I've been given like a little bit of a promotion. Um, so I wanna be able to give my counselors the most support they can. Any dance games, any music games, let me know down below so that I can suggest them to my counselors. When I get there, we can try them out, see what works, see what doesn't. Um, thank you so much for watching. And uh, subscribe down below if you wanna see more content from me and I will see you whenever I upload a video next. Au revoir, goodbye.